Good morning, church. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. I welcome you to worship this morning at peace. It is good to have you with us in worship this morning. Uh, the second Sunday of Easter, April the 11th, 2021. Thank you for spending part of your uh, your Sunday morning here with us. It is, I guess, it's good to have you uh, with us. As folks get logged on this morning, I got a couple of uh, quick announcements to share with you. First, a reminder that we also have service at 9 a.m. this morning. That is That will be in person and also live streamed to our Facebook page. So uh, if you'd like to join us at 9, we'd love to have you. And that has and that service is uh, a, a bit longer. It's got more, it's got music. Uh, all of the scripture readings are shared, um, Holy Communion, those kinds of things. So uh, so if you are interested in that, please come join us at 9 o'clock, uh, either in person or here right here on our, our Facebook page. We'd love to have you. And then at 10 o'clock, there will be Zoom coffee hour. So if that's something you're interested in participating in, Zoom coffee hour will be happening at 10 o'clock. But at 10.30, at 10.30, I'm going to encourage you to either uh, go to our Synod's fa uh, Facebook page or our Synod's website, www.ecsw.org. And uh, the installation of Bishop Ann Edison Albright will be taking place virtually. Uh, and so if you've never seen a, a bishop's installation, I encourage you to go at 1030 today and uh, I guess either to the Synod's Facebook page or to the Synod website, www.ecsw.org, and take in the virtual installation of our bishop. It's uh, Bishop uh, Elizabeth Eaton will be preaching and presiding, and uh, yeah, it'll just be a great opportunity to uh, be together as the greater church. So, um, so please do that. And this Wednesday, we will have service at 5.30, like we normally do, and, and 6 o'clock Zoom communion. Now, next Sunday, please make note of this, and I'll make sure to share it uh, a billion times between now and then. But next Sunday, uh, I'm taking the Sunday off. And so that means that our friends from Crossways will be providing worship for us. And so we will, uh, and it's a, it's a great opportunity to see the folks from Crossways um, and to support camping ministry and, and all of that. So um, we won't have a live service next, um, next Sunday, uh, but we will make sure that you have worship available to you in a variety of formats um, from our folks at Crossways. So please just make note of that. That's the only little slight change we're having. Um, so... Please be aware of that. All right. Good morning, folks. Nice to have you with us this morning. Good morning to the Steinerts. Hello, Jan. Good morning to you. Good morning, Joyce and Amy. Good morning, Stephen. Hello. Good morning. And Pauline, uh, good morning. Yes, it is rather wet, uh, but we could use the rain, and so i um, thankful for the rain. Uh, good morning, Anne and Donna. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Nice to have you with us uh, today. It really is good to... Uh, Good to have you with us in worship uh, this morning. So with that, as folks get logged on, we will take a moment, we'll prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Christ offers us abundant grace, and too often we struggle to find peace with that forgiveness, unable to trust completely that death has been conquered once and for all. We take a moment now to offer our confession and our doubt. Forgiving God, you have shown us the light that conquers death, but we remain in the shadows. You remind us of the promise of eternal life, but our doubts can overwhelm us. Forgive us. Help us to trust what we cannot see and to believe when it is so much easier to doubt. Siblings of the risen Christ, 
God who has raised Jesus from the dead offers us a new life in Christ. Child of God, your sins are forgiven. Rejoice in the blessing of God. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's pray. Almighty God, with joy, we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. Once again, good morning. Nice to have you uh, with us in worship uh, this morning. And our reading today comes from the gospel according to John, the, 10, the 20th chapter. We begin with the 19th verse. And glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the, disciple, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After Jesus said this, he showed them his hands and his side, that the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When Jesus had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the marks of the nails in my hand in, in, my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have, not, because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, I know it's happened to all of us. We walk into the middle of a conversation and we simply have no idea what's going on. We think we might have a hint or a clue, or the reality is we simply don't know. And it's made worse when those around us continue to talk without filling us in or simply assume that we know exactly what they're talking about. I mean, it's frustrating, isn't it? And maybe sometimes the opposite happens to you. You walk into the middle of a conversation and you think you know immediately what's being talked about. After all, I mean, these are your friends, they're your family, people you spend time with, and most likely it's a conversation or a variant, uh, 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 you know, a, ver a variance of a conversation that, that's been had before anyway. So you probably have a good idea. I think this is what happens to Thomas in our gospel lesson today. Thomas has been through a week, a week filled with trauma and confusion and betrayal. Yes, yes, even doubt. Thomas has watched as religious leaders whipped a crowd into a frenzy and then killed his teacher, this Jesus of Nazareth, the one whose every word he clung to and was willing to follow anywhere. And all of it unfolded 
quickly, like I said, in, in the course of a week. And so no doubt, the fact that this all unraveled so quickly played a doubt in all of this emotion that was mixed together. But remember, Thomas wasn't the only one who went through all of this. Everyone who had been following Jesus was in a similar situation. But for whatever reason, Thomas wasn't with them that night when Jesus first appeared to the others. Thomas wasn't there when Jesus offered his wounds as proof that it was really him. Thomas wasn't there as the others who were scared were holed up behind locked doors and Jesus walks right through them as if it's no big thing. And then Jesus says, peace be with you. Offers his hands and his side as proof that it really is him. He breathes on them the Holy Spirit. He forgives the sins. Thomas wasn't there there. And we don't know why. And there's no sense dwelling on why he wasn't there because we simply don't know. But because Thomas wasn't there, that somehow leads us to think that he didn't have faith or he didn't trust or he gets labeled as doubting. When in reality, all Thomas wanted was to be a part of the conversation to have all of the information that everyone else had. Thomas wanted to be included. And when the conversation got bigger and got more complex than he could comprehend, he wanted proof. He wanted proof that this Jesus was alive. The same proof that, that Peter and the rest had already been given. When we gather for worship, be it at 8 o'clock, online, be it 9 o'clock, in person, or live streamed, or sometime that feels convenient for you, we are gathered together by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has brought us together. And together, we receive an assurance of our faith through the words that are spoken, through the interaction with the community and whatever form that looks like, whether you are someone who is vocal saying good morning or you're simply someone who sits back and takes it all in, wondering if this might be a community for you. We are gathered together by the Holy Spirit. We are gathered together to hear the word spoken. And then hopefully we feel empowered to go into the world to share the good news of what God has done. To share the good news that Christ is in fact risen. To share the good news that we are loved as we are. Now all of us gather for a variety of reasons. Some of us gather because peace is our faith community. And it's been our faith community for pretty much all of our life. Some of us gather because we are in search of a faith community or we've been a part of different faith communities and this is one where we have landed now. We gather because we want to experience the love of God in Christ Jesus. Some of us gather because we desperately want to believe that God loves us and the world seems determined to tell us otherwise because we don't fit whatever box is being presented that day. The truth is, on any given day, at any given moment, we all can doubt our faith. We all can question if God loves us or if any of this matters. And I know that I can say for certain there have been times in my life my faith has been challenged and even abandoned because it was simply easier to walk away. I've had those Peter moments where I've denied Jesus. I've had those Thomas moments where I've demanded proof if I am going to believe. Those moments when Jesus shows up anyway, despite my doubt, despite my denial, despite my fear, and then I get scared to the core because Jesus shows up anyway and it doesn't make any sense. Jesus says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. 
In large part, the faith we are called to share deals not in what we see, but what we experience. Jesus encounters us through the practice of bread and wine and water, word, gathering together as a community, whatever that might look like. And through all of it, God's voice is heard. God's voice is heard in our conversations, in our flawed and faithful stories. God is present. Because you see, that's what God does. God shows up in the most unlikely of situations, at the most unlikely of times. Again and again, God shows us that nothing is impossible when God is involved. Beloved, I want you to hear this clearly. It's okay to have doubts. It's okay to be afraid and to question whether or not God can possibly love you because of how broken you are. If God knows the mess that I am, there is no way, absolutely no way, that God can love me. It's okay. It's okay to have those feelings. And you know why? You know why it's okay? Because Jesus will keep showing up again and again and again and again until you are ready to believe that it's real. Until you are ready to believe that God's love for you is bigger than your doubt and your fear and your questions. Because God loves you and that love is bigger than all things. Healing from grief, fear, and sin takes time. And we're being told it's okay. God understands that it's okay. So come as you are, knowing that you are loved. Come as you are and experience this Jesus who loves you. Come and know that you will receive peace. And know that you will receive forgiveness. And then go into this world and offer that same peace and forgiveness to others. And when the world doubts, know that God will continue to show up for them as well. You are loved. You are loved because Jesus has said it so. And that is amazing news to share. Because alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for loving us as we are. Thank you for reminding us that our doubts are natural and that you will continue to show up so that we can continue to believe we can continue to strengthen our faith. Most of all, thank you for Jesus, who reminds us that we are forgiven. We pray all of this in his name. Amen. Well, folks, good morning once again. It is good to have you with us in worship. It is always a, a pleasure and a delight. And, uh, and so we're, we're glad that you're here with us. And, um, and, and, it, and it's honestly true when I say that you know, this gathering of community uh, is, is important. And, 
if there's one thing we've learned throughout this uh, pandemic, throughout you know these last 13 months or so, uh, it's that we are whenever we are gathered together, it's uh, a gift from God. And so, however it is we gather, uh, know that that we are gathered in God's name. And I want to continue, and I want to say thank you for continuing to support the ministry that happens uh, here at Peace. We simply could not do this without you. Um, if you ask me how best you can support what happens here at Peace, I'm always going to tell you, please pray for us because prayer makes a difference. Um, I, I've, I've seen it. I, I know it's true. Prayer makes a difference. So continue to pray for the ministry that happens here at Peace. If you're able to help us financially, that's also uh, very welcome. Uh, the easiest way to do that, I think, is to go to our website, peaceoshkosh.com. Click on the Donate Here button. There's a couple of quick steps and uh, taken care of. So um, if you're able to help us financially, we, we really appreciate it. Uh, however, uh, the best way that you can support us is to pray for us and pray for the ministry that happens here. And like I said, I've, I, I've, seen, that, I've seen that time and again. Uh, that shines through. So as we talk about prayer, let's uh, take a moment as we get ready uh, to say our prayers. How this works uh, on Sunday mornings is I will, um, I will start with a centering prayer and I will, um, and then I will invite you into a to a time where you can pray wherever you happen to be, lift up the prayers that that uh, that you need to need to, and um, and then we'll have a, a closing prayer. And uh, I'm going to tell you that if you want to drop prayers in the in the comment section, you're welcome to do so. There are people who do come back throughout the week to see what our community is praying for, how they can be in prayer for others. So if there's something that's on your heart that you would like. Uh, prayer from the community for, uh, please drop it in the comment section. We will gladly do that. And uh, all right. So with that, let's, let's pray. Gracious God, this morning, we come to you thankful for uh, your persistence, your persistence in pursuing us, your persistence in reminding us that we are not alone, your persistence in reminding us that we are forgiven. And so as we bring all that we carry, we bring it to the foot of the cross and lay it there knowing that you hear our prayers that are spoken, prayers that are unspoken, prayers that come as sighs too deep for words. And so at this time we bring all of it to you. This morning, God, we bring before you people who doubt. Doubt does not mean lack of faith, but doubt means that there is this struggle to, to understand, a struggle to comprehend. And so we bring to you all the people who feel negative about their doubts. And the world that tells them that their doubts means that, that they don't trust. We come to you this day with, on behalf of all those who have been hurt by the church, who have been told they are not good enough to be a part of the church, that there's some, for some reason that you can't love them because of who they are. Or, uh, so we bring to you all those who have been pushed away. We want to remind them that they are loved, they are cared for. We come this day and pray for all those who are experiencing natural disasters. And we pray for rain in areas 
that are in desperate need of rain. We pray for uh, some sunshine where the rain has fallen too much. We pray for uh, some stability when it comes to getting ready for the growing season. We pray for all those who are victims of violence. There are far too many stories in our world of violence, of people who simply don't care about each other. And it hurts. It hurts to see those stories again and again. Help us to learn to have compassion for each other, to love one another as you have loved us. This day we pray for Les and Eugene and Patty and Steve and Kathy and Jens and Andrew and Tom and John, Chet and Diane, Joyce and Bev, Doris, and Carol, Kathleen, and all others that we have named before you, all others that rests on our hearts and our minds. Continue to be a healing presence for them, a calming presence for them and for those who love them. And we pray for this community, for this gathered community, however it is we are assembled, we pray that you continue to reveal your word to us reminding us that we are loved and forgiven. We ask this, dear God, and whatever else you see that we need in your holy and precious name. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing, folks. You are what God has made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Once again, everyone, thank you for being with us this morning. It is great to have you with us in worship this day. Uh, three quick reminders. The first one is that we've got uh, 9 o'clock in-person service that will also be streamed to our, our, our Facebook page. And then there's 10 o'clock Zoom, Zoom coffee hour after that. Uh, Bishop Ann Edison Albright's installation will be happening virtually at 1030, either on the Synod's Facebook page or on the Synod's website, ecsw.org. And next Sunday, we will not be live uh, at 8 o'clock, but rather we will be having a service shared with us by the Crossways uh, Camping Ministry. And I'm excited about that because this guy is a pastor because of camping ministry. So um, excited, elated to share with you uh, a service from, from Crossways. So with that, know that you are loved. God loves you. So do I. Go in peace. Love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll see you soon.